Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir. Joined today by Martel. You can find him at Miami Heat Zone Podcast. We got Trent. You can find him at Miami Heat Network. And we got another special guest joining the show today. We got Dub from Dub's World. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm chilling, man. We also rep in PC coming from there as well. Um, but yeah, it's cool, man. I've been waiting to join the show for a minute now. I'm glad our timetables are finally here. So let's get right, man. Thanks for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. So we're in the offseason right now. NBA playoffs are still going. Boston Celtics up 3-0 against the Pacers. Like luckiest path to the NBA finals I've seen in, in <laughs> quite some time right now. Uh, Dallas Mavericks up 3-0, which is a, a little surprising against the, the T-Wolves right now. So some good playoffs right now. Kind of upset the Miami Heat got bounced out early due to injuries and all that stuff, availability, and just not having enough, essentially. Um, we could have been there against the Celtics for a, a third ECF in a row. But anyway, we got some basketball going on. We could talk about that perhaps later. But right now it's the offseason for the Miami Heat. Biggest thing we're waiting for right now are two extensions, one internally with, with Jimmy Butler, and then two, the most important one, I think, honestly, because I think Jimmy's going to stay um, regardless, is the Donovan Mitchell extension. So we've had some rumors that he was disgruntled and unhappy about the playoff run, and then he came out, talked to Woj, saying, I'm happy, I'm cool, I'm determined. And then there's rumors about JB Bickerstaff getting fired and Donovan Mitchell not getting along with him. He got fired last week. So it seems like Donovan is potentially going to stay. And there's reports from Shams and player uh, people out there basically saying the same thing. So, Dub, let's get started with you first. So let's say we don't get Donovan Mitchell because even if he doesn't sign that extension, we know the Cavs, it came out saying, a report saying from, uh, what was his name, something Terry Pluto from the Cleveland.com. They are going to indeed try to trade him if he doesn't sign that extension. But we're going to have to compete with a lot of people to get him. So let's say we don't get him. What will be your ultimate plan B for the Miami Heat? We have to make some sort of moves. We're probably going to lose Haywood and, and Caleb. So we need to replace them with some, you know, free agents for like the veterans minimum. But like we could still trade Tyler. We could still trade Terry. We could still trade the kids. What's your plan B? What's like your best scenario in terms of a plan B if, if Mitchell stays with the Cavs? Yeah, if Mitchell stays with the Cavs, honestly, to compete, I don't see a plan to work. We have to wait for some of these contracts to finish. Uh, Tyler's uh, Tyler Hero's contract's not going to finish finish until a little bit. Uh, Duncan Robinson's is almost done, but we're not going to be able to make some really big moves um, until we move off of some of those. And now you got Jimmy Butler asking for uh, Max for two years. That's money tied up right there. So if Donovan Mitchell is not able to come here, I'm not going to lie. Um, Miami, the best thing they could probably be is a playoff team, and that's it. So, I mean, if they're content with that, because Caleb Martin, I think he's going to ask for a bag in this offseason, right? So we may not even keep him. Um, it's, it's just not looking good for us, bro. I'm hurt. I'm torn. It, it seems like to me the Jimmy Butler era is over. Um, Jimmy Butler, if he we give him that max right there, I don't really – realistically i don't know who else we can bring over on board that we can afford to win the championship i just don't so maybe terry rogier being healthy maybe we can see what happens but even then terry rogier tyler hero jimmy butler bam does that really scream championship pedigree crew not really you know so it's i'm hurt man as soon as they lost and as soon as they was hurt this year i was like I don't even know what we can do, bro. I, I think we're stuck. So what I would do is I'll prepare for the future, invest into BAM. Maybe we could bring up Hero, but I'm thinking of a retooling phase of, you know, I think we have to start really thinking about building against uh, with, I mean, looking to build for the next best guy, you know, and damn, it hurts me just thinking about it, bro. So but do you Jimmy think may have to go? Yeah, yeah. So do you think – it's because we're talking about winning, right? We've had a successful run in the Jimmy build. None of us expected us to go to the finals, especially the first year. Um, I know the bubble, you know, folks say it's an asterisk, even if the Heat won. Um, <laughs> it's definitely an asterisk because the Lakers won, but if the Heat won, yes, it won. But either way, still impressive. And none of us, I never thought, without adding another star, we would have gone to, you know, two finals with Jimmy Butler. So it's been a success. But, like, dude, I'm old school. Like, 
it is a success, but it's also not because and like UD has been saying stuff like on uh, the OGs podcast with Mike Miller, like we're upset. We're pissed. Like winning's mm-hmm. winning. Like it's like, it is great to not be a poverty franchise and suck and not make the playoffs and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. I want a championship. So I kind of feel the same way as you, like we need to do something so we can win within the Jimmy build, but it might be super difficult. So you wouldn't consider though, like the other rumors and speculation of like, an Ingram or like a Trey or even a DeJounte or whoever, like you don't think it's worth it. Cause you don't think it's going to make us content. Is that- yeah. We, we got Terry Rozier, right? So unless I don't even think we could trade because we just traded for him this year. So I don't even think we could trade him next year. Um, I'm not sure about that though. I'm there's no one else. Like I, I said, they could try to get Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving couldn't hit. We try to go all in for Damian Lillard. They may a little mess it up by being a, being a dickhead to the Portland Trailblazers team, right? Now Donovan Mitchell may be available, and if the Cavs are doing what they should to try to keep him and he stays, that's it. Who else? Like who else is, is in the league is going to put us over the edge? I don't know. Paul George looks like he's going to stay. Bi, I don't really believe in him like that. Uh, Dejounte, I think he's great, but I think we need a bit more consistent all, uh, scoring from other people, right? So, and then we need more shooting as well, especially if Caleb Martin is not there and he's not a knockdown shooter. So it was like, like, what do we do? What do we do? There's nothing. There's nothing for us to do. I, I can't. It's, uh, it's sad, man. Man, listen, 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 listen. I'll say this. For everybody that said the Miami Heat needed to be healthy, I, I, I still don't believe this. Even if we was healthy um, with Tyler, Jimmy, um and uh, all these other players on the team being healthy, right? We're not competing against this Dallas team if we was to even compete in the championship. Luka and Kyrie right now look unstoppable. Um, the West, even if Denver, Denver, Minnesota, whoever wins that series, like say if Denver wins it, we wasn't beating them. I don't think we beat Minnesota. Um, even with catch struggles, I really don't. I don't. I don't think this Heat team, how they're uh, constructed, it just isn't good enough. And um, going to like trading for star players, let's be honest. This happened last off season. Our hopes got up. We're getting Dame. We're getting Dame. Mind you, Dame said, I want to play for Miami. And it still didn't happen. So all this Donovan Mitchell rumors to me, I'm over it. Because I know deep down, it's not happening. So why am I going to go, let's go get him. Let's go get him. It's not, it's not happening. He's going to stay in Cleveland. And if it does, he doesn't sign the extension. Let's be honest. The Heat are going to be like, well, we're just going to give this up. And you're going to deal with it. Because that's what the organization think they are. They, they think they can lowball people. And then that's what happens. The Bucks come out of nowhere. They say, well, we're going to go take them, right? And there's plenty of other suitors for Mitchell that have better offers than us. Unless we're throwing Jaime, Jovitz, Tyler, and a bunch of other stuff to get Donovan Mitchell, I don't see us getting him. So it's really the ball's on Mitchell's court. I agree with you to an extent with Mitchell. Like, Mitchell can bring us to that championship land. He fits a BAM timeline around the same age and stuff like that. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind DeJounte. DeJounte does seem more realistic than um, Donovan Mitchell. A Trey Young makes no sense. We already have Terry. Why? Are we, what are we doing that? We're putting Terry as a six man? I, 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 I don't personally like that. Um, so I think the Heat team is screwed. We're losing Kayla. We probably might lose um, Haywood Highsmith too. Because some team's going to offer a bag to that dude. I promise you they're going to offer him a bag. You need perimeter lockdown defenders in this league. You see it now in the postseason. So we're going to be missing out some key pieces. Hopefully... We can get something out of this draft pick because so this season I think it's just gonna be one of those years where back to back years we're gonna be a playing team. That's just personally my opinion. This team just isn't good enough. Are we gonna get Jimmy consistently throughout the season, or is he gonna half ass throughout? Is that is that what he's gonna do? Is he just gonna continue to coast? Um, he's gonna so, coast. You already know that. You already know. That's what I'm saying. So like, if Jimmy's gonna coast, what if like, and we're not getting Mitchell? This it's over. It's over. Like, I don't want to hear about health. Tyler been the same player for the last four seasons. He hasn't improved. He has it, and he's injury prone. So, like, I'm a diehard Heat fan, but I'm going to tell you the truth. It's over. It, it sucks. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it, it, it's it's rough. We're going to have to do a little bit, uh, a little read to and go, um, and, and go forward, my opinion. And uh, I want to talk about Highsmith that you brought up. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to be one of them guys where they're going to be like, yeah, he was good on Miami. He ain't gonna be good nowhere else. I 100%. promise you. I promise you, he's not gonna be good nowhere else. Hundred percent. But wait, wait. Let me chime in real quick though, because Max Struess is the only player that's looked fine, right? Like Gabe, I know he had to deal with injuries, 
But there's been other players that have been shipped to the other I think team. Think so? Your point. No, no, but one, one player though, DJJ. He's been he's starting. He's the starting four in the Western Conference rounds. Like DJJ's look pretty good. So it's a nah, Luka. Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic tax man. He That's made him. Luca made him. Luca made him. Luca's making that him. Man. That man was getting up out the league until he got on yeah. Dallas, bro. I'm not gonna hold. You. Still gotta hit those threes. And he can still. He's hey, Amir, Amir, not to cut you off, but listen, no, go for it, go for it. Max Struess was horrible. In a in a postseason, the dude was horrible. <laughs> like he was horrible throughout the regular season. You're right. Yeah, like he had a couple good moments, but yeah, he was he was enough. To That's play. what I'm saying. So Kendrick Nunn who just won a championship in the Euro League. Gabe Vincent forgot how to play basketball. Everybody that leaves this organization is gonna play bad. So go go get your bag now. Because after you leave this, you're probably not going to be in the league as soon as your contract's up. So the ma- the main thing is they don't know how to use these guys, right? I That's remember the like, yeah, like Kendrick Nunn. I think Kendrick is still playing the league. You see how yeah. he's nearly going crazy, right, bro? Like Kendrick Nunn, especially when he got on the Lakers, like he's not a, he was never a spot up shooter. A lot of times, like when he was going on these teams, they're trying to make him a spot up shooter, and he's like. That's not really who he is. And some of the way that mainly the Lakers, the way they play basketball, it's a LeBron system. It's not an actual system that players can really be themselves, right? So that just was a bad was a bad fit for him. I think Kendrick Nunn was one of them guys where they really messed him up because they just didn't know how to use him properly. They didn't know how to put him in good positions to be successful. And I'm, it's, it's upsetting, but, hey, he's going to get a bag in the EuroLeague, so maybe it was all works out in the end, you know? 100%. So then, so you mentioned Jimmy Butler and him coasting, and then also too, we kind of have a really big payroll. You know, Bam Adebayo, he's looking at a max deal. Duncan Robinson, he's still on his contract. Tyler's on his contract. Uh, Terry's on his contract. So with Jimmy Butler wanting a super max contract going forward, do you think it's worth it? Because think about it, you know, he's only getting older, and he's probably going to be 37, 38 by the time the end of that contract comes up. And then also, too, he's the type of guy to where if you don't really give him his money now, he'll probably just leave. So do we keep Jimmy Butler? Do we trade Jimmy Butler? Like, Or do we give him the bag? What do you think the Miami Heat should do with him? Out of, res- out of respect for what he's done and out of especially the way you handle Dwayne Wade, I think in order for you to keep up your favor amongst the players, you should pay him, right? Realistically speaking, though, we like Jimmy Butler, you got to be honest, bro. You half ass your way through the season. You get hurt as well. People forget he got hurt in 20, even though he played great. He got hurt in 2022. He was hurt last year in the finals run. He was even hurt this year where he did, couldn't even play. That's three years in a row you have been hurt in times when we needed you to be healthy. And that's only going to get worse the older you get. 38 years old. On a super max contract, bro, that's unrealistic. I just got to be honest with that. But Miami Heat, you also you mess it up with Dwayne Wade because when he wanted his money, you didn't want to pay him. So now, if you don't want to pay Jimmy Butler, that's going to look bad on you as an organization. Now you you being for your players, you feel me? Yeah, so but that's. They, but they ahead. also gave him his max deal. They gave him one hundred and fifty million. Who? You know what I'm saying? Jimmy Butler. Think about it. He's been yeah, getting years ago, right? a year. Yeah, yeah. Two years. So, so technically, so to me, because mm-hmm. listen, there's no other. You know, people might say that Jimmy Butler is not a star player. Of course, he's a star player. Does he, you know, load manage throughout the regular season? Yes, and that's like the biggest problem. But think about it. Jimmy Butler has done more with less compared to all these other teams across the NBA. You know, they have all these stacked up teams like the Clippers and the Suns, and Jimmy Butler's taking this ragtag crew, you know, to the finals. But then also, too, like when you look at Bam, we really haven't had a decent power forward next to Bam. And then by the time Bam gets to the playoffs, he looks exhausted. So what's an ideal four that you can really put next to Bam? Because I think there's a few moves that we can make. I really do like the DeJounte trade only because I think we can get him at a decent deal. Mm-hmm. But we definitely need a four next to Bam at a box. So what's your ideal four next to Bam? I got to look at the free. I haven't checked the free agency tracker uh, at all yet. Uh, mainly because I've just been so caught up in the um, in the playoffs and what's going going on, uh, but I think you're absolutely right. People want to talk crap about Bam Adebayo running the five all the time, when it's like, no, we really haven't had a sizable four at all, at all. So he's doing it all alone, right? Um, I'm not sure who they can get right now. I mean, I think Pascal Siakam's going to be uh, an unrestricted free agent. I, ideally, I would like him, but he's going to ask for a bag too. A lot of the forwards that were that uh, it's going to be around there 
available, like we're probably not even going to be able to spend, especially if we're going to pay Jimmy Butler this contract, right? And that's what I mean where we're in such a bad dilemma where if we pay Jimmy Butler, we're screwed. We're, we have to stay with this crew and hope to, for the best, right? If we if we don't pay him, now we have flexibility of what we can do. And it's just – it's a bad dilemma. Like I would look like for like a Pascal, um, if I'm just thinking off the top of my head in the league – like you're gonna need a a a physical four that can also shoot and be versatile enough to rebound. Damn, who who am I thinking? So of? like a Kyle Kuzma type, correct? Maybe like a, a Kyle, Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma maybe offensively, but defensively is not gonna be great for us. You know, defensively we're gonna that's gonna hurt us a, a lot, so, honestly. So Dub, so so because i made a video on power forwards and the list is horrible and i'm going for more more realistic targets yeah. and some people be like well these are not star players but i'm also just talking about debt purposes so like a player like nick batum and covington stand out to me just for debt purposes you yeah. see what you see what batum did to us and i get it he's old covington's old and stuff like that but we, we're not getting no laundry marketing like we're not getting a call like if we trade for a john collins it's over. You see what I'm like? We're not doing none of the star stuff. So I think we have to really rely on Jovich and whatever this draft pick that we potentially get Jovich, Jaime, um, and if High with Haywood stays, like I think this team's gonna remain small. I really don't expect much changes for this team. And I think it's cause I've just been losing hope with the front office, it's Andy and, and thing and stuff like that. And and like you said, with Jimmy's contract, it's really just gonna destroy us. Like it, it really is. And I think What's gonna turn around as soon as Jimmy's contract's over? Then that's when we have to like, all right, let's let's. What's next now? Like, is so Bam's our guy, but do we trust Tyler enough to be like, okay, you're the number two guy? Because I for sure don't, oh. dude. Exactly. So that so this is why we're in a like it's a weird predicament and and it's really really tough. But I was looking at the NBA standings and I'm gonna be honest with you guys. We might be cooked because Celtics are going to be back next year. The Knicks are for sure going to be back next year, a healthy roster. The Bucks are going to be back next year. Cleveland, I don't know what the hell they do. I'm not too worried. But Magic, they had a really good season. Indiana's in the Eastern Conference Finals, so we can't talk really much about them right now. We can't. I, I can't say shit about them. They they did their job. Philly, Philly's going to, I mean, if somehow if they get PG or a star player over there, they're always going to remain. So it's just like... I think we could still be a top eight seed in the in the East, but if we're the, the our roster is just not good, and I think a lot of these teams that I just named have better depth. Like I mean, Indiana alone, they have three bench players that should be started. Like Obi, TJ, Isaiah Jackson, Ben Matherin. Um, he's coming back from injury next season, so like the East is kind of like deep uh, compared to what Miami's roster is looking like right now, and it's it, it's just not a good look. It, it's it's oh. tough. To go back to what Martel said, and my um, Trent, you actually made a very good point. Realistically, with the money contracts and everything, people available, it's not much to choose from, right? But if you got to ask me like a forward, that will be ideal. Like you're going to look like a cat. You're going to look like for Jeremy Grant on Portland. They're like Jabari Smith or Tari Eason from the Houston Rockets. Any forwards like that, that would be great for them. But they're locked in where they're locked in with their teams. They're not available or they cost too much. Like we're we're I'm not we're fucked, bro. Like we can't do anything. We're, yeah. We can't do anything. And there's no forwards available that is gonna be helping us out, man. Keegan, I would love Keegan Murray. I think Keegan Murray would be great, bro. But he's he's on <laughs> yo. It's bad. It's bad right now. Yo, bro. Like I and I I've been avoiding talking about Miami because the more and more I talk about, it, the more and more I see us in a scenario where bro, we're these next few years, we're gonna be fucked. We're going to be so screwed, bro. And there's going to be mad criticism, too. I can tell him now. Pat Riley needs to quit. Uh, Eric Spolstra's cooked. Jimmy's cooked. It's like, bro, I mean, at the end of the day, the team has overachieved already. And we all wanted a dub up here, right? And that was my gripes, especially the Kyle Low Lowry contract really messed us up in that time frame because it left us, like, with no breathing room to make some moves. Um, it's just sad. And, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing for us to do, man. It, it, you go, Trent, you go. I was gonna ask you since you made the power forward video and just thoughts in general because you obviously we know you love Tyler Hero and he's your hero, obviously, right? Um, Fuck you. uh, so what are your thoughts though, like of trading Tyler and because he's making close to 30 million next season, 
And we have up until the trade deadline in February next year. So like there got there's guys that could be available that are power forwards right now. This is nothing to like move the needle. We're not gonna get like a superstar power forward. There's not many bigs in the league that are available, right? More guards are available, but what are your thoughts though? Like if someone like a Gafford or PJ Washington, which we've mentioned in past videos, come available, you see what they're doing with Dallas. I know Dallas, their two their, their two superstars are elite offensively and our two stars are not that but still you saw the big difference that those two guys are making with their size their skill their defense is there anyone out there that pops in your head like trading tyler for two guys that make 15 million we have no cap space guys we have nothing we're like in the negative right now we can only make a trade we're at the first apron so let's say bobby portis becomes available he's making 12 million next year 2024 Right, we can get him if he becomes available, and someone else. Like, are there two guys that come up? And do you think that's worth it? Like, how far can we go if we do that? Like, Man, I don't even know if Milwaukee would take that. But I though, I, yeah. I I seen this thing though, and they almost took Grant Williams for Bobby Portis. So I don't know what they're gonna take. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, I love a Tyler Hero from Malik Beasley and um Bobby Portis. I love that. Hey, but okay, I don't even know if this works money wise. But we talked about this beginning of the year, and Kelly Olynyk and Colin Sexton. What's up? Throw me at, throw me them. You know why? Because Tyler, Tyler has no value in my opinion. He made it worse in the postseason. This is the this is the time with no Jimmy, where you have to show up. You had one good game in the postseason, and after that, you played horrendous, horrendous. So like, I like I said, I don't know Tyler's value. Um, I think Tyler, but let's just let's just be honest. Tyler's probably fush. He's probably. Right now, like, bro, every season I'm in trade rumors. Just trade me at this point. I, I feel like that's how he feels at this moment. Like, just trade me at this point. Because cause the Heat fans are over that dude, 100%. I think the organization still loves him. I still think, you know, Pat wants him to turn it around. But I think that's just who he is. I don't think he's going to get any better. I don't think he could possibly get any worse. That's just my opinion. I think he's always going to be a 20-point scorer. But, like I said, I, I, like, a, I like a Colin Sexton, uh, Kelly Olenek. Um, you know, Kelly's Malik on, Kelly's on a different team though. He got he's on Toronto now. Just they're yeah, but all that yeah, just they did trade. Just, yeah, yeah. But like, but like that's the thing. There's nothing that we can really trade for Tyler in the in, in the front office. Is like, well, or the other front office is like, yeah, I'm gonna take that. I, like, I just don't, I don't see it. I mean, that's that's a tough part. So they and and we have to use Tyler for the Mitchell because what if Mitch? Because like, okay, let's go unrealistic now, right? What if Mitchell goes, I. Right, I'm, I'm, I want to go. I don't want to be here no more. We have to throw Tyler in there, right? I feel like we just can't trade him for something else. And then if, if Mitchell goes there, it has to be Tyler Hero. Has there's to. No, there's no other option. So I, the, the dumbest franchise I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we just gave them Jaime and Jovic and picks and whatever, some salary filler. Yeah, that's that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. The dumbest thing. <laughs> hey, yeah. I don't, I, like I said, Amir, it's, it's tough right now. I think we're banking on this draft pick. But how can you? It's a fit. It's a, it's not a not even a lottery pick. Like hey, you know, man, something. we 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 always make our picks, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Gonna strike out. Yeah, I mean, Jaime, like like yo, you just... have to build. You gonna have to build around Jaime and Bam, bro. Like that's what we're gonna almost like similar you, when yeah. LeBron left. Y'all really think Jovic that good? I think he's Fuck terrible. no. Jovic is terrible. Trade, yo. Why oh do people think God. he's so untradeable? Yo, I hate going on Heat Twitter, Heat YouTube. No, let's keep Jovic. Let's keep... For what? Why? He's Why? What he do you... Don't, he don't play defense. He can barely jump. He's not a good shooter. He's not a good mid-range shooter. He's not a good three-point shooter. He's not good at getting to the rim. He's not a great passer. Like, what the hell is he great oh, at? Man. He's 20. Okay, I'm not a delusional... I'm not... I'm, if Donovan Mitchell becomes available tomorrow and says, I'm not signing my extension, do you think I'm one of those, Trent, that's going to say, no, I'm not going to trade both Jaime and Jovic? Martel, you know that. We're going to trade Tyler. Three you got to go all in. You got to go all in. Put all give the me, chips in. Give him Jovic. Give him Jaime. Give him all three picks, right? The 15th pick, the two future ones, and everybody. Like, I'm on. The, I, but he's only 20. Like, he didn't shoot 40. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I if there's he's no guarantee, but he's he's – he has, okay. he has talent. He has upside. He could, he's 20 years old. Come on. This is the problem. Well, upside. They keep t- they start him and then take him out the lineup for the whole game. Like, <laughs> yeah, the whole they game. start him and then he barely plays. They start him for the first like three, four minutes and he barely gets any PT the rest of the game. I know. He's a kid. He's, but, he's, he's played 80 games. Amir, games, this on. is, this is the problem because we don't have a four next to Bam. So when they see a four that's like, 
I, I guess that can pl- play it. They're like, oh my god, he, he's the next big thing. No, he's not the next big thing. The dude sucks. You know, you know what I would love for Jovic to be a Nas Reed. Can you be a Nas Reed for me? Maybe. Can you do that? Yeah. Can you? Or, he ain't yeah, doing it. No, what do you think about Jovic? No, the problem is, is that the Jimmy Butler window is closing. We don't have time to sit back and wait for like Jaime. He could play right now. Jovic. He's still going to take maybe another one or two years to fully see what he's capable about. And we don't have enough time. You know, the way he plays, he's kind of like a Gallinari type, which is perfect next to Bam because it's floor spacing. I do think he's a decent passer and a decent three-point shooter, but I don't think we have to necessarily get a star. And I've kind of been saying this for years, and Dub was right. That Kyle Lowry mistake set us back like 10 years, and people don't realize that. We were missing $90 million dollars. In the span of three years. And people don't realize how detrimental that was to the Miami Heat. And that's Jimmy Butler's fault. And he never held Kyle Lowry accountable oh by God. any in, in any way, shape, or form. You and don't get right me now. wrong. Terry has a lot of questions to answer, too. Because when he gets back on media, what happened to his neck? Because I think that even <laughs> if the Miami Heat at least had Terry Rozier, I think we probably could have won at least maybe one more game. But losing him the way we did was very detrimental as well. So in terms of getting a star, I don't necessarily think we need a star. If Donovan Mitchell does become available, then, of course, you, you give up all the picks and you give up whoever you have to give up to make it work because the Jimmy Butler window is closing. But I think that if you can get a trade like DeJounte Murray you know, to the Heat and then Tyler Hero in a first-round pick going to Atlanta, and then maybe you make another small marginal move, I think that helps the team overall because now you have a solid starting lineup with DeJounte, Duncan, and then you have Jimmy Butler – Bam, and then whoever's at four. So oh I so 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 I do think there's maybe one or two moves out there that you can make because I think that with Pat Riley, you know, calling Tyler Hero fragile, I don't think they're really happy with him internally. Let they're me ask done. You. Yeah, they're, they're done. fed up too. And you made a great point. My bad, uh, Trent. You, you got to write it. You made a great point here, and this is why it's like, bro, like Jimmy, like you demanding for all this money, but bro, that Kyle Lowry, that Kyle Lowry contract was because he was the he was I think he's your son's godfather, bro. Like, fam, you you made us overpay for that, and if we don't pay you, you probably gonna make a big deal out of it, saying you deserve it. But bro, we've been doing things you wanted before. Like, it's like, come on, Jimmy. Like, you got to be realistic here. You got to meet us halfway, bro. Because a super max when you're always hurt. Wait, come and on, then last man. one, last one. The Miami Heat, and this is on the organization. They've done a terrible job with asset management. They gave away a second round pick to get rid of um the uh, center that we used to have. Uh, Dwayne Dedman. Yeah, take it away off of Dwayne Dedman. The Kyle Lowry trade. We also, I mean, the first round pick for Terry Rozier is okay, but even still, that should have just been a straight up swap, in my opinion. So, in terms of their asset management, I think it's been terrible. They let Max walk away for nothing. They let Gabe walk away for nothing. Caleb. And we, they're going to let Caleb walk away for nothing. And we built these guys up. They're the reason why they can get $60 million. Matt Schuster got $64 million because he played on the – and it's only because he played on the Miami Heat. So we can't continue to build guys up, and then they turn around and leave, and we don't get anything in return. Let me ask you a question. This this this, this is probably part of the – people will call, hate me. Yo, is CJ McConnell better than Tyler? <laughs> no. No. That's probably – no. Yo, bro, I'm not going to lie, man. Better how? Is he really? Is he really? I'm asking. I'm asking. Listen, listen, I'm asking. I'm, I'm the, just... the, the rim pressure is moving me, man. I'm Listen, and let me ask you this. Okay, because if you don't think that, is Ben Matherin better than Tyler? Tyler's better than Ben Matherin. I would die. Okay, see, see how you had a question, TJ McConnell, and that's a bench player? Mm-hmm. But Tyler Hero is a bench player to me. Like, Tyler Hero's a great six man. I think he is, but the organization views him as a starter. That's the problem. Yeah, he called himself Luca and Trey. Like, what the hell is wrong with him, man? Man, it, it, I, man Luca's about he to go to his been, first finals. He's been I, playing like an elite six man his whole entire career. That's what yep. he's been. And he, that's what he's always. I like the thing is with Tyler, it's annoying because you'll see flashes of him playing at like this all star caliber level, but then other flashes of like those many pull ups. People get mad at him for missing shots, but in my head, I'm like, you're generating good quality looks for yourself. You have a handle where you know how to get separation for open look for yourself. It's just whether or not you're going to hit it. He doesn't hit it enough, especially in the postseason. You know how many times I see him do a sidestep wide open for mid-range? Brick. You know how many times I see a pull-up off a screen? 
Wait, that's a shot you want? Brick? Bro, you know, wide open threes. I see him get brick. I'm fucking tired, bro. Like, yeah. I, like I see you get into your spots. The flash is there. You get to your spots very well. You can't finish. What good is that? Million dollar move, five dollar finish. I'm good, bro. It's over. But listen, I want to do a finals preview with you guys real quick. Not a finals preview, but for like prediction. Um, so are we assuming it's Dallas and um Celtics? I'm assuming there's no way either of those. <laughs> Okay, so because I'm rooting for Ant and it sucks because Cat fucking sucks and I was too. Okay, Cat's horrible, horrible. But and c- crazy thing is, I'll still take Cat on my team. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would, I would take Cat on my team. Over Bam? Over Bam? Oh no, 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 not over Bam. No, no. But yeah, Cat, Cat next to Bam will be amazing. That's what I'm saying. Cat next to Bam, hundred percent. But look, right? So like, what, what y'all previous? Y'all think Dallas wins or like Boston wins? Oof. The problem is that Boston has a lot of guys to throw in front of Kyrie and Luka to not stop them, but to wear them down. So it really just comes. But the thing is, I honestly think that the Mavericks, they're on a championship run. Like, that's what it feels like. Once they got Gafford and once they got uh, P.J. Washington, they really add. And that's what I mean by all the Miami he need is like two complementary pieces like that. If we can do something like that during this offseason. It's not going to, you know, make all the headlines, but that's something that this Miami, like, we need glue guys. You know, like a Jay Crowder, you know, when the, you know, when the Andre um, Iguodala thing that we did, like, a few years back. But I honestly think that the Mavericks can do it. It's just going to be tough because, like I said, they have, the Boston Celtics have a lot of bodies to throw their way defensively. Yeah, and they have the size to match up, especially if KP does come back. But at the point of attack, to your point, Martel, Derek White, Really good defender. Drew Holiday, one of the best two-way players. So, like, obviously, no one can stop Luka and Kyrie one-on-one. Even if you're the best defender, you're still going to get cooked seven out of the ten times, right? They might stop you a few of those times. But it's going to be tough for Luka and Kyrie. But Kyrie does have championship experience. I know Drew Holiday does too, but Kyrie was, like, really, like, a big part of that with LeBron. Like, Drew Holiday, like – was a piece of that it was obviously more so Giannis and Chris Middleton and whatnot, but Brooke Lopez. So it's tough. I just fuck Boston like for life. Like it just, <laughs> anybody, anybody, like it's it's got to be the Mavs, right? As a Heat fan, like I don't want to see, I don't want to see Tatum because I think he's a fraud. Like obviously he's a good player. He's like a top 10, 12 player in my opinion. He probably was like seven, six at one point, but he doesn't show up in the playoffs. He's still young. He has an opportunity, but. I just can't stand Jalen Brown and Tatum, so I'm just praying that Luca Harry can pull this off. But I would I'm gonna say, say Mavs. That. Yeah, Dub. What do you think, though? What's your prediction? I'm gonna say Mavs if they make it, especially mm-hmm. if KP is still banged up. They're going up against a defense right now that has sizable wing defenders that should be able to contain them, along with elite rim presence in Rudy Gobert, and they are dog walking that shit. Like, they are walking them down every night, killing them with lobs from Gafford or Lively, destroying them in pick and rolls, destroying them in blitzes, destroying them in zones. Like, the Timberwolves are struggling, and this is a better defense to me than the Boston Celtics group. So, and then it's also the size. They have they have more size than I would think strength than the Boston Celtics, and Luka and Kyrie are just killing it. They're destroying it. And especially with, I don't know if KP's even going to be there, but if KP's not there, definitely Dallas all the way because Al Horford's not going to be able to guard that, especially if they keep switching. If they keep switching, Luka's going to put KP on the island or Kyrie, then it's over. But if they tell them to fight over screen and play drop, KP's going to get cooked in them actions too. So it's like there's no answer for those guys. So Boston has to make up with that with make up for that with supreme offense that I think they get in their heads a lot of the times where I don't think it's going to be there as much, you know, and Dallas has proven this whole entire series run. They can D up. They and could. And they went up against a five out offense in the OKC Thunder. And it was just, it was really Shea Gilchrist Alexander that was make building that shit up because of those mid range shots. JT going to hit those shots like Shea? I don't think so. But I'll say this dub, right? I think, I think the point, the most important thing is to me is Luke and Kyrie Irving's going to do their thing. But if, because Derrick Jones Jr. has struggled in this series consistently from the three point line, he finally came back to life. 
um, last game at home. But in, and so is PJ. I mean, I, I've been betting on PJ. This is how I know PJ. <laughs> it's been struggling. <laughs> huh, I've been betting on that dude to give me 10 points. And he been if he's not in that corner, he's a terrible shooter. If he's not in that corner three-point, he's a terrible shooter. Right. Um, but if those two players are hitting, I don't see how you beat the Mavs. Especially if Lively comes back. I think he will. I, I, I think he's going to be fine. There's reports that Maxi Kleba's coming back. That's only going to space the floor out even more. We've seen him in a stretch alone just going against the Clippers hitting four threes. Like, he's not great, but when he's hitting, he's hitting. And and, and how Luka, you know, runs that offense and Kyrie Irving runs that offense, they're so focused. The, the defense is so focused on them that everybody's open. That that, that most – Lively hasn't missed a shot in this series. He's 13 for 13. He hasn't missed a shot because playmakers are just making it so easy for him and Gafford. So easy. So, Dallas is a tough team, but, um, yeah, I, I – Bro, I have a I have a friend that's a Dallas fan, so I have to root for Boston. I because I, I work with him and he's in my ear every day. In my ear, I don't want so Boston F Dallas. Let him win. Let him nah, win. bro. No, 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 no. Because because I be, you're not a friend, man. That's nah, look, but hear me out. Because I'm a Russell Westbrook fan, so I betted with him in the first round and I lost. So ever since then, he's been in my ear and I've just been rooting against him. And then my t- well, I've been rooting for Ant. And they just got busted up. So both of the teams I've been rooting for are getting busted up. <laughs> Root for Boston, then. That's awesome. I hate Boston, though. But I'm from Boston. But I hate Boston. But I don't want to hear Boston. We're good, guys. Cool. Dallas is winning. He, all the teams he's been with, all the teams he's been signing with, has been getting dog walk. <laughs> Boston about to get dog walk. We're good. Exactly. We're good. For sure. Good. For That's sure. it right there. You are Stephen sure. A. Smith, man. For sure. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we here. Wait. For sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Yo, Dub, so thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you hopping on the show today. Do you want to let the audience know where they can find your stuff before you hop off? Man, you can see me on PC. You can see me on Dub's World, man. Whichever one, man, just type Dub and Air or Player's Choice. That's all. For sure. Martel, you want to? Like, share, comment, here? subscribe, and thank you for all the support. Have a good one, guys. Peace.